Good morning, Calvary. It is great to see you. Uh, and Pastor Chad here, ready to share our word for the day. And, and this week, we're going to be looking at a man called Nehemiah. His story is found in the Old Testament in a book called Nehemiah. And, uh, and we're going to be looking at his life and learning from him because he was a man that God used to do amazing things, rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. Uh, now we're going to be looking at Nehemiah this week because things are moving and shifting and people are getting ready to kind of step back towards normal. And I thought as we move in that direction, maybe we should start talking about how we're going to rebuild our lives. Now, since we're going to talk about Nehemiah, I've got to give you a little bit of a history lesson. And I know some of you don't like history, but, but pay attention. Before I do that, let me just mention um, my nose. Uh, I know some of you are looking at going, what's wrong with Pastor Chad's nose? Well, you know how some of you have had a bad hair day? Uh, I've had a bad nose day, or actually a bad nose week, but that's okay. God's healing me. I'll be fine. By the time you see this, I'll probably be all well anyway. But uh, let me tell you about Nehemiah. Uh, Nehemiah was, well, first of all, before we get to Nehemiah, let me tell you about uh, what happened to Israel. So the kingdom of, of Judah, where Jerusalem was the capital, was conquered by the Babylonian Empire in 587 B.C., they came, they besieged it, they broke down the walls, they destroyed the city, tore the temple down, tore the walls down, carried away the leading people into exile, into Babylon, uh, where they lived and, and served and, and became a, kind of a strong people group in that area. Uh, and then in 539 BC, Persia conquered Babylon. So now the Persian Empire is a dominant empire of that world, and the Jews that are in exile are now serving, living, growing up in the Persian Empire, and they begin to let them go back to Jerusalem. And, uh, and we get to Nehemiah's story, and that is in 445 B.C., over 130 years later after that original exile event. The, the exile event was Daniel. He got carried away into exile. You remember his story? Uh, and then uh, this is way after that. So Nehemiah, who is he? He is a prominent official in the king's court in Persia. He is the cupbearer to the king. Now, we don't have cupbearers anymore, but basically he was the guy who tasted the wine, tasted the drink, whatever the king was drinking, to make sure that it wasn't poisoned so that it wouldn't kill the king. So it was a pretty uh, high trust job. So the king knew him. The king trusted him. They had a long-term relationship. And uh, because when Nehemiah heard about the conditions in Jerusalem, he was upset. He was broken. He prayed and fasted, and, and when he came into the presence of the king, the king knew that his heart was filled with sorrow and asked him what's wrong. And that's when Nehemiah said, would you give me the authority and the resources to go and rebuild the walls of Jerusalem? Uh, the, the king of uh, Persia, Artaxerxes, gave him that authority, gave him those resources, and Nehemiah went to Jerusalem to rebuild the walls. Now, he ended up serving as governor of Jerusalem for 12 years. But when he got there, he found the people were helpless, they were desperate, the walls were broken down, they were defenseless against their enemies. And, uh, and here's the miracle part. Nehemiah rebuilt the walls of Jerusalem in 52 days. 52 days. It's an incredible story. And, and he did that facing opposition, he faced military attacks, he faced assassination attempts, he faced charges of treason. Uh, people th accused him of wanting to become a king and, and rebel against uh, Persia. All of that was going on, and in 52 days, he did an amazing thing and rebuilt the walls of Jerusalem. We can learn a lot from this amazing leader called Nehemiah. So what does that have to do with us? Well, we're about to re-enter life uh, as we knew it. You know, things are kind of moving toward that day. I, I mean, uh, restaurants are opening. You can start doing retail shopping again. Uh, you know, uh, surgeries are back on at the hospital that are elective. All kinds of normalcy is returning. And, and, uh, and while we're moving in that direction, we want to intentionally rebuild our lives to the glory of God. Uh, these last two months have been hard on, on everyone. Some of you have thrived, but a lot of you really are broken. And, and if you're kind of in that broken place, or even if you're in that thriving place, what if we intentionally and purposefully rebuild our lives to the glory of God? What if we learn from Nehemiah, his faith, his example, and we apply that to our own lives? Because Nehemiah had a faith that was unshakable. He had convictions that were unbreakable. And, and, and he had accomplishments that were unbelievable. Now, he never imagined that he'd be doing all that. 
and where you're sitting right now, your life may be broken, it may be shattered, you may be desperate, you may be depressed, you may be financially underwater, you may be wondering, uh, can my life ever get back to good? And I want you to know that God can redeem your life. He can rebuild your life. No matter how broken, shattered, hopeless it is, He can put the pieces back together. The Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 8 said this, For we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love Him, to those who are called according to His purpose. If you love Jesus, He wants to rebuild your life. He wants to redeem the brokenness, and He wants to give you a new start. What do you say we learn from Nehemiah and do that together? God bless.